فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحوم كالطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير Shaitan sees you. Him and his group, they see you from a position that you do not see them. So they attack you through your thoughts. And they are the ones who give the false comfort to those who disbelieve. They are the ones who give the false sense of security to those who disbelieve. Amazing. Look at the verse. Allah says, they give the false sense of security to those who disbelieve. Are we disbelievers? May Allah protect us. But on the other side of the coin, are we people who have a false sense of security? If that is the case, strengthen your iman. Strengthen your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go back to iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Allahu Akbar. Go back to that. And ask yourself, am I worshipping Allah? Am I worshipping Him alone? Do I receive my education from a trustable source when it comes to my link with Allah? Or am I worshipping the one who has come to me with the message? Imagine, you know, I, and I like to give this example. I might have given it before. But I will repeat it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best of creation is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without a doubt. The highest in rank of all the messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one whom we hope for and pray for, his intercession on the day of judgment, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has such a privilege and such an honor. We, we acknowledge it and we will only be considered believers if we acknowledge that. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amongst us are people who try to deliver the good message. We will respect them. We will honor them. And we will understand that they have perhaps been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring the message to us. And we will understand they are human beings. They may err. They may make an error. So what would happen? Because they are human and because they may make an error, everything they say, we have to test it to see if it passes a certain test. No matter what is being said, whether I say it or anyone else says it, if it is to do with your faith and your preparation for the life after death, there is a test. You test the words that the person is uttering. Do they conform to revelation or not? As simple as that. If they do, we take them because that will be the true preparation for the day we die. If they don't, we do not need them to say the minimum. This is why when a person associates a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say for example, I am calling out to Allah alone and I am asking Allah alone and so on. Then comes a man and he says, I can help you. I can assist you. I can tell you so many things about your life and I will tell you what to do. And if he comes and tell us that which is in total disagreement with what Allah has revealed and if we are to still accept it then we have associated that person as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then do you know what Allah says in a hadith Qudsi he says Ana aghna shurakai ani shirki man amila amalan ashraka fihi ma'ya ghayri taraktuhu wa shirka when, we, when there is a partnership, I am the one who does not need that partnership. So whoever wants to engage in such partnership between me and someone else, I withdraw and I leave the two of them to do their thing. This is Allah's plan. So it's very important. Keep on calling out to Allah. Someone asked me a few days ago that if I am possessed by the devil, Surely I can go and do those 80 lemons and those 100 rose petals and I can run around the, 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 uh, you know, the four-way street naked at 12 o'clock midnight in order to be cured because I am possessed. What other way is there of doing it? So immediately I said, my brother, something very important you need to know. 
Allah has a way and a system that he has taught for us to achieve and receive cure from our sickness and possession. And that is through permissible means. You either seek medication or you continue reciting the Quran and make sure that you do it through the Quran and the Sunnah. And although the process might be a little bit slower, but Allah knows why he has kept you in that condition for a longer period of time.